What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Kin Stretch class brought to you by Stretch Effect. My name is Coach Luke, and I'll be taking you through today's class. So the focus of today's class is going to be on our spine and our shoulder blades, aka our scapula. Right, so a lot of our other past classes have really been focusing on the shoulder, right? So rotation, all the motions that we rotate in the shoulder and in our hip. Because so the hip and the shoulder as being ball and socket joints, they have the most available workspace, right? So our cars is kind of that that kind of characterization of that workspace. So because they have the most ability to move, they also have the most ability to get injured and the ability to lose motion, right? So we really want to be focusing on those motions and because like we talked about with shoulders, we have flexion, we have extension, we have all these different internal external rotation. We train those with more classes because we have more capacity to move. Um, I just really wanted to take today's class to kind of focus on things that we haven't really been focusing as much on, which is our shoulder blade and our spine, right? So our spine is so important for us because that's what houses our nervous system, right? So your, your spinal cord, all those nerves, everything that kind of helps that allows us to move and to utilize our shoulders and our hips and all of our joints of our body, right? So we're gonna be going through our shoulder blade and our spine. We will hit some other, other joints with our cars and then really just kind of getting in focus on specific motions that we may hit with our cars, but then other motions that we may not have seen before, okay? So uh, really just kind of focusing on those joints and then as we progress through future classes, we'll be adding in more complexity and more kind of attention to detail. So we're gonna start it right into it. We're gonna go with our neck cars, okay? So you can be in a collapsing position. You can be in tall kneeling, which would be up here, or you can take a seat on a block if the collapse building is tall kneeling. Okay, so we're just gonna start. You can start with fists here. You can start open fist there, or you can start open palm. We just wanna make sure that we're reaching down towards the ground the whole time. As we move through our neck cars, you may find that yourself wants to kind of shrug up or those traps kind of start to tug up as you rotate the neck. So we just want to make sure that we're staying down, shoulders are down, body's tight, core is locked in. Okay, so we like punch towards the ground, right? So in my case, my fists are on the floor and I'll be staying here the whole time as I work through cervical flexion, cervical rotation as I rotate chin and collarbone, look over that shoulder, ear drops over the shoulder, rotate chin to sky, rotate ear over the other shoulder. Drop the chin to the left collarbone and rotate through. Let's go one more there. I'm going to go chin the collarbone. Ear over the shoulder. Rotate chin the sky. Ear over the other shoulder. Chin the collarbone. And through. Let's go reverse that to the left. Chin the collarbone. Ear over my shoulder. Chin to the sky. Ear drops over and chin of the collarbone, and reverse, one more rep here, chin, ear, chin, ear, chin, and root. Very nice from here, we'll go right into our T-spines, we're in our T-spines from the tall kneeling position. If you have a block, you can grab a block and go between your legs, grab a block, that's okay, you can use you know, a thick book, you can use pillows, you can use anything that you can squeeze between your knees, right? So a couple different ways you can use this block, right? So you can go more narrow, which would be a little more challenging for your, your lower, smaller base of support. We can go on the side, kind of narrow here, but for the sake of what we're gonna do if you have a block, let's go wide block here. So we're gonna fill the block between the knees, you can tuck those toes. So we're squeezing the block in while simultaneously squeezing the glutes forward, almost like we're doing like a glute bridge type motion. Ribs are down, body's locked in. I'm gonna take my arms, and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna cross my arms and make fists as I go on each shoulder here. Okay, I'm gonna go two T-spine rotations each time. I'm gonna chin my chest. I'm gonna segmentally flex forward, right? So as much as I can flex forward without my hips shooting back, right? So I wanna keep this hip extension here. Glutes stay tight, core stays engaged. As I fold down with the flexion, so you should feel a good stretch on your upper back here. I'm going to slowly Rotate to my right as far as I can go. Flex to my right. Segmentally extend back. As I get tall, so I'm gonna keep my chin in my chest, but I'm trying to lift my shoulders, lift my chest as far as I can. Over the top. Not only flex, take my top shoulder, cross the body, 
and rotate through. So I want you to kind of take notice of where the emotions start and where they stop as we go through today's class. We'll be breaking down our T-spine rotation even more so that we can kind of see each individual component piece. And then we'll kind of look at our end position, say end of right lateral flexion. And as we come back to these sort of days class, we'll kind of notice where things feel good, maybe where they have the, the range expand a little bit, okay? So we're gonna go one more, ring, one more rep on that right side. So I'm gonna hold, flexion, rotation, hip sniff, no, keep squeezing that block, keep squeezing your glutes, core stays engaged, rotate over the top, flex to my left, right shoulder crosses, and rotate through. And tall again. If you would like to reset your arms and change positions, you can do that as well. I'll do that just because it kind of feels a little, a little funky to go the other way. So it's a good, good thing to kind of change up every now and then. If you don't feel too comfortable, go on one side with the arms. Rotate to my left. Flex to my left. Still lift that chest. Keep squeezing the block. Keep squeezing the glutes. And to my right. Rotate to my right. Now rotate back to center. One more time. Rotate. Flex. Get tall. Extend over the top. Flex to my right. Rotate. Fall down. And come through. That's our T spine, or our thoracic spine, right? So that's about from about here. Up, right, so this is our lumbar spine, upper back is thoracic spine, and then our neck is called our cervical spine. So this one, we call it global spine, cat cam, right, or cat cow. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna think quadruped position here. We're gonna work, so if the T-spine is rotational, this is gonna work linear spine, okay? So we're gonna be in that quadruped pose, and have my hands under my shoulders, knees right under my hips, and tuck those toes, and then I'm going to press up into my cat position, right? So I'm going to flex my T-spine, flex my lumbar spine, flex my cervical spine. I'm just trying to draw this big round arch with my back. I'm going to come over the top, keep trying to tuck your tailbone, round up the lumbar spine, keep trying to make press your back through your shirt, then the T-spine, and then chin to the chest. Gets good lumbar spine. So that there gets good cervical spine. So that is our cat, right? So a cow will be in this extension position, so nice and slow, just for now, work on this extension position just so we know our start and our stop points, right? So we're thinking lift the tailbone, we're trying to arch that back, we're trying to lift our chest, right? We don't want to just squeeze our shoulder blades, right? So we're pressing away from the floor, lift the chest, right? That would give us good thoracic spine extension. Almost like you're trying to show the logo of your shirt, straight forward, and then I'm gonna lift my chin to the sky. So this is what's called global spinal extension, right? I got lumbar extension, T-spine extension, and then cervical extension. Okay, so what you'll see a lot of times is people just move flexion, extension, flexion, extension. And that's okay, right? That's, I mean, as long as you're going slow, very you controlled, I'd rather you do flexion extension work than not do anything at all. Right, but what happens is people end up being really good at moving through one segment of their spine. So as they move, they're here and back, and here and back. See, I'm just really moving through that one little segment of my spine here. So what we're gonna do, it's called a segmental cat cow. Okay, so that just means we're gonna start up, and we'll start up in flexion. So tucking the tailbone, pressing the back down, up, up to the sky, pulling our chin down, and then we're gonna segmentally move one vertebrae at a time, as slow and controlled as possible, up into our cow position or our extension position. Okay, so from there, we'll be fully extended. And then we'll start that tailbone again, and then we'll start segmentally flexing as we start the tailbone, work all the way back up the spine, back to our cow position. Okay, so if this is something you've never done before, it's, trust me, it will not be pretty. First time, it'll take a lot of practice to be able to segmentally move through one vertebrae at a time. But trust me, this will be a game changer for not only your spine, but you'll feel better, you'll be able to perform better just in life and then in sports that you play, especially golf. I've had a lot of golfers say this has completely, completely changed the way that the back feels. 
So this is something I want you to work on every day, ideally. Morning is the best time to work on it. Because there's a lot of bed, your body's a little bit stiff. But before activity, before you go to bed, really any time you, you have a chance, right? The more you sit, I would say, the more you should be doing this exercise. All right, so let's get into it here. We're gonna do three reps in each direction. So we're gonna go really slow. So ideally it would take about 30 seconds to a minute to work each direction, okay? So we're not gonna go quite that slow today. We're just gonna think tuck, tuck the tailbone, drive my back up to my, through my shirt, shin is tucked. Okay, from here I'm gonna work just my tailbone first. So I'm gonna just untuck the tailbone. As I move from my tailbone, I'm gonna work into my lumbar spine on my lower back. Almost belly button here. Keep moving up my lumbar spine. Close to the called the TL junction, that's lower rib cage. We're at rib cage. Keep working up one vertebrae at a time into extension. Do that chest level. Keep trying to lift that chest, chin straight down. One vertebrae, and then we're about collarbone. Get to the collarbone. And chin. Yes, that was cow, or cat to cow. From here, and now I'm going to go from cow to cat, right? So here, extension. Start touching the tailbone. Work up into the lumbar spine. Spine, rib cage, That's back through the shirt, keep tucking, 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 and in the chin. Got two more reps there, slower and better here. Tailbone, one more spine, lower teeth bone, lift the chest, lift the collarbones. Lift the chin, and now we are cow back cat feet are low or tailbone lower lumbar spine one vertebrae at a time work up 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 more flexion two one more rep here tailbone. Tucked. One more spine. Lower two spine. Chest. Lift the collarbones. Lift the chin. Last one. Very good. Keep working, guys. Tailbone tuck. One more spine. Tio junction. T spine. Up, 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 and shake it out. Very nice. So something that was new for you. Make sure that you continue to go back and practice that as much as you can. If you have any wrist discomfort, kind of being in that quadruped position here, you can always use your knuckles, or you can elevate yourself onto some blocks here if that kind of takes some pressure off. Still will work, cat cow from that position. It's really about finding the best position that works for you. Because really, it's all about individualizing this type of trick, right? So, that was cervical spine, that was T-spine, that was linear spine in flexor extension. So now we're gonna work into some scapula now. So, I'm just gonna start, tall kneeling, hands on the side. So I'm gonna put elbows and lock down, right? So I'm trying to hear as much as I can be. Gonna seam down the side of your shorts. Okay, line up your middle finger or middle two fingers with that seam on your shorts, okay? So from here, boots are tight, boots are down, core is engaged. I'm gonna do three scapular cars, right? So we're gonna start up, shoulder blades up to the ears. Try and keep the elbow locked out the whole time. If they bend a little bit, that's okay, but it's always about the intention of trying to stay locked out so we can really isolate our shoulder blades as much as possible, okay? So from here, I'm gonna pull back and squeeze my shoulder blades. I'm going to pull down on those shoulder blades, come down rounded out at the bottom, reach forward, come up, come over, squeeze, 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 chin stays down, that's two, 
four more. Try to expand that circle every single time. Get a little bit bigger, a little bit more control, a little bit more disciplined in your motions here. That's three. Now let's reverse. Always trying to round out those edges, right? So we're going to come back down, squeeze together, squeeze together as I come up, over, down, pull back, squeeze, up, over. We got one more here. Come around, round out those edges, pull back, and squeeze together as tight as possible. Come up, over. Nice and slow, and down. Okay, from there, that was kind of a warm up. What we're going to do next is our, call it a block scat car. So if you have a block, go and grab it. If you don't have a block, you can grab like kind of like a thick book, you can grab a pillow, something that's just going to allow your hands to stay somewhat shoulder width, and then it allows you to block out your elbows, gives you something to hold on to. Okay, so we're going to do this one. From a collapsed kneeling position. Okay, so this makes it a little bit easier to keep our core engaged. You can definitely do it from tall kneeling, but what happens a lot of times is people go into retraction. They want to arch their lower back, they want to stick their ribs out. All right, so this just gives us a better opportunity just to walk down the rib cage, stay nice and tight. It still could happen, but right? so it's still you want to still walk down, still be disciplined for your core position. I'm gonna grab that block straight out in front of me. So we're gonna start with just what's called capsule cars. So instead of a full rotation right into it, we're just going to go protraction, which is reaching those shoulder blades. We just want to make sure we reach with the shoulder blades, reach with the arms, and we're not doing our cat, right? So that would be spinal flexion and protraction, which, again, it's not bad, right? But what, for what we're doing today, we just want to go into protraction of the shoulder blades, reaching forward, just keep the that block, elbows locked out, and then retract, pull the shoulder blades back. Protract. Retract. One more. Protract. Retract. The retraction is something that people should be spending a little bit more time with because that's usually what's a little bit more challenging, right? We always want to do what's more challenging with our training, right? So it's good to train things that we're good at, that doesn't feel as good. But the point of training, right, is to kind of put ourselves in this advantageous positions so we can improve, right? That's the whole reason why we're here, right? So I'm going to go full, three full cars now. So elbows locked out. You can grab here, if you want to grab there, whatever's most comfortable for your grip. I'm going to protract. I'm going to come up and shrug while I still protract. I'm staying up in that shrug. Now I retract. Keep retracting and then you press those shoulder blades and protract. Again, we've got two more that way. Up and over. Although we are hitting four different kind of directions on that compass, right? We want to try to round up those edges as much as possibly can and then rewind so up is locked retract pull back and down shrug keep retracting protract back down retract depress retract elevate protract while I'm elevated let's go one more very good squeeze don't let those elbows unlock like that just did here stay tight up and over and down. Woo! Nice and toasty now. Okay, from there, we will just finish off our shoulder blades for now with some what we call quadruped or loaded scapular cars. Okay, so we do the same motion, everything that we just did, but now we're gonna do it from the quadruped position. So this allows us to kind of put a little bit of load into those shoulder blades, right? So now as we have our body weight pressing down, just gives us a little bit more weight to use here. Eventually, when we do future classes, we can go to kind of a modified push-up position. We can do that here, that's more load. Or, with all these blocks, we can go into a push-up position, scat car. That's not for today, we can do that future classes, like I said. Just go in the quadruped position here, okay? Make sure the knees are under the hips. Into it. Under the elbow and under the elbows, under the shoulders. I'm just going to start with a nice tight core position, right? So a lot of people will want to arch, so just a nice tight, brace that core. Okay. I'm just going to start retraction, protraction, retraction, protraction. Go one more, retraction, protraction. 
happens a lot of times is people retract the one in the fish, right? So we really think on staying tight through that core. We really just focus on just moving up and down. Okay, this is another one, right? If the wrists are bothering you, come to the fist. Sometimes I even prefer to do it from my fist position because it just kind of feels a little bit better on the short blades. That's the one that's just a little bit more connected. So from here, let's do the full car. So three reps. So start retract, shrug, protract, and then depress, which is pulling down. So retract, shrug, protract, depress. One more, make a nice big circle. As I come around and then reverse, shrug, retract. This is the one, retract, the pressure most people need to work on. And press, shrug, retract, press, Protract one more shrug, retract, press, and protract away. Okay. From here, let's go into some elbow and some wrist. Although we're not working much elbow wrist in terms of actual motions today, we always are using our elbows and wrists in every activity, and we don't get to do these a whole lot with our other classes. So I just want to kind of come back to these, kind of give a good, good refresher, okay? So we can be same class now. We are elbow cars. Okay, so inside of our elbows, right on the rib cage. Okay, throw the elbows slightly back. I'm just going to come from here like a bicep curl. I'm going to come up, but instead of just coming up to have my palms facing me, I want to think supinate, which is rotating my palms away from me. Right. So imagine as if you're having palm here, right? I'm coming up and trying to rotate away from my shoulders. So that's called supination. Try to keep those fingers nice and straight. People want to do this kind of stuff with their fingers. That's the hand being a compensator. So elbows rotate as much as you can. Protract, or pronate, sorry. And then come down, okay? From here, I'll stay down. Up, rotate away from me. And back down. And up, pronate. Down, let's go one more. Up, supinate, rotate more, and down. People always think of the elbows as a hinge joint, which it does hinge, right? But we don't always think about the fact that the elbow does rotate, right? So that's when people talk about golfer's elbow, tennis elbow. A lot of times it's that we can't, we don't have enough rotation, and we're expecting our elbow to act as an elbow, which when it can't, that's when the pain everything starts to happen. And so the better we get, at pronation, supination, the better at rotation we get, the better everything will feel, whether we are playing golf or tennis or just everyday kind of life activities, right? So I'm gonna do 90 degree bend here. So we do the same thing. So now I'm just gonna hold this position for the capsule card. I'm just gonna pronate, turn the hands over, and supinate. You may notice that one rotates a little bit better than the other, or even that's even better, but hey, Always about finding our deficits, our limitations, and working to improve them over time, right? So if one doesn't work as well as the other, definitely okay. So you know what to work on. Last one here. I'm gonna go full bicep curl position, I'm gonna make a fist. Okay, so elbow is still on my ribs. I'm just gonna rotate into pronation. Keep squeezing those biceps, rotate into supination. Rotate into pronation. Rotate into supination. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let's go one more. Pronation. Let's get ready to get a little bicep workout. So you want. And supination. Okay, so if you're on the biceps, you can always do that more. The tighter you squeeze your biceps, you can do just air curls, really just squeezing, rotating, pro pro pronating, supinating. The more of that you can get, it's just a good, easy way to get. The bicep workout, but most more so you're training your elbows, right? So later on today's workout, I'll show you guys how to do a good little tricep workout as well. Okay, so that was elbow. I'm gonna go tall kneeling, just to give my toes and my knees a break. If you want to go on block, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go one wrist at a time. So I'm gonna hold this forearm just like this, right? So imagine you're balancing like a cell phone or a glass of wine or coffee or anything like that, just on that forearm here. So the forearm does not move out of this position, right? So that would be 
permeating my elbow. I want to stay right here and just move from the wrist. Okay, so hold that wrist in place. I'm going to work into extension. I'm going to rotate out. This is where we want to make sure the wrist stays straight up. Forearm stays straight up. And just rotate the wrist here. Just do two reps. Up. And around. Try to stay at the end of that wrist rotation. These aren't burning. Means you're not at your end. You're not doing them hard enough. Two reps all the way up. And switch. You can definitely do these at the same time, right? You obviously do that individual wrist. But this allows for both, a lot of people just to focus on one at a time. A lot of times people obviously rotate here, they want to do this, right? So you gotta make sure that wrist stays form so you're stepping down and you get all that motion from the wrist, okay? Back to here, hold that forearm to your rib cage. This hand is locked in place. I'm gonna go into extension. I'm gonna stay in extension while I rotate out. Rotate out as much as I can and then I will flex. Out, back to extension. Maybe some crackly, some nice crispy bone. Well, that is okay. As long as it's not painful, right? We never want to work into or through there you go. any pain. If you do have pain, which would say on this side would be a closing angle pinch, closing angle pain, you want to find an FR therapist, which luckily enough you have a stretch effects to start to open up some more of those ranges, get the pain free range of motion, and then you can work to solidify that range with more pails and rails and all the good stuff that we can buy. Okay, so it's wrist, with some good forearm stuff working there. Okay, so now we're gonna get back to some cervical spine. So we're gonna work some more full cars to start. That would be good, quite that fast, right? We're gonna work slow. We're going to work, which is called half cars. So we're just going to kind of break down that, break down that motion even more. And we're just going to kind of work down back to our T spine, back to our uh, linear spine flexion extension, and then back into some more scapula. Okay. So we're back in the same position we started in. Again, if you want to sit on a block, sit on a block. Make those fists punch down towards the floor. Shoulders straight down. Armpits are tight. Elbows are locked in. And I'm just going to work chin to chest. I'm just going to work rotation, so chin to collarbone, see if you can expand that a little bit more and more than when we started. Right back to center, chin to opposite collarbone, see if you can work a little bit more over that blind spot, and back through, chin to collarbone, a little bit more each time, expand that range. Chin the collarbone. One more. Collarbone. Look over that blind spot. Shoulders stay tight. Shoulders stay down. Right? If you're not shrugging. Last one. And center. Okay, so now we're going to do, that was like a pivot quarter. So now we're going to do a half. Chin the collarbone. Or sorry, chin the chest. Chin the collarbone. And now I'm just going to go. Ear over, I can pour water out my ear over my shoulder. And then I'm just gonna drop that chin back down. Back to center. Shift the collarbone. Ear over the shoulder. Pour the water out the ear. Back down. We got two more there in each direction. Chin to stay on that chest. You rotate, chin the collarbone. Ear goes over. Good stretch. All this good stuff here. Shoulders stay down, especially as we dump the water up here. You may find yourself on the shrug, so keep reaching down. Two each way. Last one here. Rotate. Biggest rotation you got. Here goes over. Get that stretch. Take a breath. Chin back down, chin rotates the collarbone, here it goes over that shoulder, get that stretch on all this good stuff here, and chin back down, 
and through. Very nice. Okay, so next one, then we go standing here. Okay, so for standing, slide this off here. So we're, we're gonna need to go back to a wall. Okay, so if you have a wall around you, we just wanna think stand up against that wall. So heels will be right up against that wall. It should be an inch or two outside the wall. We just wanna think both butt cheeks, right? Think your tailbone is pressed firmly into the wall. We're gonna start with just spinal flexion, right? So I'm gonna go and fold here, or you can wrap, you can grab the shoulder, or even wrap your arms all the way around your body. And I'm gonna flex down one vertebra at a time. So just like we did cervical cars, or just like how we've done our cat cow, we want to segment with one vertebra at a time, flex down as far as I can until I feel my butt want to leave the wall, right? So I'd be here. I was flexing, 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 flexing. And once I felt like my body was moving forward, I would just stop. And from there, I'm just gonna stay right on there. And then take one vertebrae at a time, try to put that spine back on the wall. Segmentally extend back up. Not in a full extension, of course, because you have the wall behind us, so you're not gonna be able to truly extend but back up into your tall posture position. Okay, so we're gonna do three reps there. Heels to wall, feet together. If you, if, it, if you feel like you don't have any balance here, by all means you can go a little bit more hip width stance. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna fold. Three reps, butt to the wall, chin to the chest. One vertebrae at a time. I'm just gonna fold down in the flexion as far as I can. So I feel like my weight's gonna shift forward or if I'm gonna use that cell the wall. And then I'm gonna segmentally put that spine back on the wall. One vertebrae at a time. Back up. So what this is gonna allow us to do, it's gonna kind of allow us to find our end ranges of our, say our two spines. We're gonna flexion, we'll work in some rotation each side and then we're gonna work in some lateral flexion. So very much like we just did with our cervical spine, we can work in there. We do the same thing with our T-spine, and then we'll come back to some T-spine cars and see. Feel any different, right? It's all about building awareness, it's all about finding the ends for you, right? So let's two more here. So cross, chin down, hold down, moving in a little bit more, a little bit further, and back up. Back up, up, up. Last one here, one more rep. Push it down. T-spine, we have flexion, rotation. So the thing with flexion and rotation is, as you come down here, right, so I'm going to be here, flexion, I only want to rotate as far as I can, so if I'm rotating to the right, only as far as I can, so I feel my left butt cheek want to leave the wall. Okay, so I don't want to rotate so far that now I'm off the wall. Both cheeks stay on the wall. I'm here, and I'm just going to rotate as far as my body will allow me until this one wants to leave. So I'm going to go really slow, Right before you feel like it's going to come off the wall, you stop. We're just going to come back down and we're going to rotate back the other way. So we're just trying to find our end ranges of flexion and rotation. So three reps each way, and then we'll do flexion, rotation, a little lateral flexion. Okay? So I'm here. So in the cross position again. If you want to hold the shoulders, you can do that as well. Flexion, as far as I can, and then I'm just going to rotate. Slow to my right. Once I feel my left wants to leave the wall, I'm going to come right back through the center. Rotate to my left. So my right butt cheek wants to leave the wall. Back down. We've got two more. Really try to each rep so you can push a little bit further. Push, push, push. Nice, slow, methodical, physical movements. Feet stay flat. Try to rotate, rotate, rotate. Back through. Rotate to my left as far as I can to my right butt. She wants to do the wall. One more. 
rotate to my right. Feel all of this stuff working here as I'm in flexion, rotation. One more, flexion, rotation to my left. Squeeze out one more millimeter. And three. Nice. Flash me nice little wave now, all right? So, last one. We're going to go cheeks to the wall, fold, rotate, flex. Now, okay, so we're finding the end of the ranges of our front half of our T spine motion, okay? Three reps here. So, I'm going to go down, flexion, rotation, lateral flexion. I'm gonna come here, rotate through, rotation, lateral flexion. I'm here to pull my elbows in my rib cage, rotate back the other way, pull my left butt cheek once through the wall, lateral flexion, goes down, Get a little core workout for us too. Flexion, elbows come into the ribs. One more each way. Rotate, flex. Elbows come in, rotate all the way through. Flex, elbows come in, back to our start position. Come back down the floor here. Now we're going to take everything that we just did back to our T-spine cards that we started with the beginning of the workout. So we're going to take that block, same position that we had it, wide block again. You can go narrow block, you can go really narrow block, but for now, a wide block, wide stance, like we started in basic support. Squeeze the block in, give it some good squeeze on the inside of the legs, squeeze the glutes forward, ribs are down, and then fold. So same thing that you had. So if you're here, you can do that. If you're here, or you can wrap all the way across. You just do this one just for the sake of variety, right? So here, chin to the chest, fold down. So two reps each way. Full T-spine car. Rotate. Get a little bit more. So have a little more awareness of where your outer range, ranges, ends are over the top. Flexion. Rotation. And through. Let's go one more time. Slowly rotate, flexion, extension, over, lateral flex, top shoulder, rotates, elbows come in, to the center, let's go to the other way, rotate, so right here, flexion, right, rotation, lateral flexion. And over the top, knees stay tight, ribs are down, flexion, rotation. One more, nice and slow here, guys. Rotate, flex, extend, over, flex, rotate, elbow, pull into the rib cage, back to the center. Very nice. That was a lot of good T-spine work for you there, so I highly recommend you do that as much as you can. Going up against the wall really just allows you to find your end ranges, see where, as far as I can rotate each direction, lateral flex without me losing balance, without me coming off the wall. Then you go back in your T-spine rotations and kind of take that same feeling, that same mind-muscle connection, and then just work your teeth by the car so you might notice you get a little bit further, a little bit more into extension, a little bit more to lateral flexion. And so the more of that you can work on, the better. But at the same time, whenever we talk about you know, kind of our rules of how our spine works, right? So always want to work a linear spine, so flexion extension, so our cat cow positions. I really get good at those before we start throwing a whole bunch of rotation. Right, so we've got some, some rules of the way the body works, the way the joints work. So we always want to train, say, rotation, say, internal, external shoulder rotation. That's definitely a prerequisite to get better linear motion, say, flexion and extension. But at the same time, it works the opposite way for our spine. Right? So we want to get better linear motion, so flexion and extension of the spine, before 
before we start working a whole lot of rotations. That's why I was thinking today, we just really broke those down and went really slow. Not to say that you can't train those rotations, but the better you get a flex extension, the better your rotation is gonna get. Which takes us into our next piece here. We're gonna break down our cat-cow even more. So how we get our linear lumbar, or linear lumbar, thoracic, and cervical extension together. We're gonna break it down to just working lumbar flex extension and then thoracic flex extension. Okay, so we've got the same quadruped position that we had. So now I'm gonna drop down so my head will drop to the floor. My hands will kind of wrap around my head. Okay, so I'm just gonna do just like this. Okay, so before I get into it, I'm gonna explain it because I'm not gonna very well. So we're gonna be in that position. We call it a thoracic block. And we're gonna round out our upper back as much as we can. So we're gonna really just focus on our lumbar spine, which is this component, this segment here. Okay, so I'm gonna do three reps, nice and slow. Thoracic, or lumbar, and I'll show you how to do thoracic. So we're just, just like this, or watch your position. Okay, I'm gonna work down, lumbar, focus. So I block off my thoracic spine by rounding out my upper back, head to the ground, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna work my lumbar extension, turn the tailbone, and lumbar flexion. Tell me. Okay, so we need three reps here. So here, start lumbar spine, extend lumbar spine as much as I can. And here I will flex lumbar spine, try to drive up, get my low back. Two more reps here. Extend. Trying to lift that tailbone, trying to do as much arch in the lower as I can. Press, flex. And then I will flex the lower spine. One more time. Start the tailbone. Extend. Start the tailbone. And So the lumbar with a T-spine block. Now I will do T-spine with a lumbar block. So with the lumbar, as I sit in this position here, sit on my feet, that naturally puts the lumbar in a good kind of curve position, right? So the lumbar spine allows us to kind of block off the lumbar spine so we can really just focus on our T-spine, our upper back. So we're doing the same thing, okay? So here, I'm gonna think press up, T-spine flexion, right? So I don't wanna just press the shoulder blades away, right? That's too many protractions. So I just want to think shoulders tight. You can spread the floor a little bit with the shoulders that just kind of locks the floor into place. And I'm just trying to work thoracic flexion. Here, I'm going to think pull my shoulder, or not pull my shoulder, just keep my shoulder blades still. I'm going to pull my spine into extension. I'm trying to lift my chest. I'm trying to put a good round arch in my upper back. You're not going to have a whole lot of T-spine rotation or T-spine extension, so don't expect a whole lot of movement here. We just want to feel that spine working in the flexion. So kind of around my upper back, and then in extension, kind of lift my chest, arch my upper back, good squeeze on the back muscles here. Keep the shoulder blades locked in. Okay, we got one more. Spine flexion, press, 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 press. You can even pull that chin down a little bit. That'll just kind of help facilitate a little bit more T spine flexion. You know, that is the sort of T spine help us out. And I will go into T spine extension, trying to lift my chest, lift my collarbone. Breathe a little bit more, a little bit more. And relax. Okay. Last thing for today's class, we have what's called scap retraction lift offs. So we're going to do five reps of our lift off, and then I'll show you how to, like I said earlier, how to do a little tricep exercise. We're going to do retraction lift off kickbacks, okay, or elbow extension. So this is something that we'll definitely come to, come back to in future classes. We'll do definitely a scapular focused class. And then we will definitely feel a lot more from this prone position. But for the sake of today's class, because we work some scapular motion, because we work a lot of spine, I just want to finish off with this one here and then introduce it. So in future classes, we're going to keep kind of adding on. Okay, so what I'm going to do 
I'm gonna lay in my prone position. So I'm just laying on my stomach. Prone position, even though we're laying on the floor, we wanna make sure we're not sacrificing position of our lumbar spine. Just like I'm people do when they're standing, right? So I wanna think, even here, I'm gonna tuck my tailbone, squeeze my glutes, squeeze my legs together. You have a block. You can go and throw it between your thighs, between your knees, somewhere just to give you more tension as you squeeze it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retract my shoulder blades to lift my fist off the floor. Okay, so if this position is too much for you, you can come as far back as you need to give yourself space to get fists off the floor. Remember, we're not, we're not lifting by lifting my back, we're lifting by retracting our shoulder blades, pulling our shoulder blades back and up. Okay, so from here I'm gonna do five reps. I'm gonna think head is down, tailbone is tucked, elbows are up in the air, so my fists are right next to my torso. Again, the more space you need, the better. That's okay. So here I'll take my shoulders and my elbows, hold back and squeeze the start. Squeeze the block, tuck that tailbone, and then I'm just gonna lift up by squeezing my shoulder blades and lift back down. Okay, Give me four more there. So tailbone tuck, core is engaged, and lift back down. That's two. As we lift, we elbows drive up and in towards the body. Okay, and lift. Three, two more tailbone tucks. Pulls tight and lift. Four, plus one, set that core, set those ribs and lift. And five. Okay, so that was five of those. Okay, from here we'll finish with retraction, elbow extension, high tension squeeze in it, come back in, then set down. So five reps there, very nice and very slow. Remember that. Okay. Back to that position, finding what's best for you. Elbows are in towards the body, shoulders are back. Core is engaged, tailbone's tucked. We lift, slowly extend, lock out those elbows, bend. Okay, we have one, four more here. Tuck, core, shoulders, elbows, back. And two, three more there. Tuck, squeeze, lift, extend, flex, down, that is three. Two more here, guys, lock it in, core is tight, elbows in, shoulders back, and squeeze, and back. Last one, make the best one yet. While we're extending, keep squeezing the shoulder blades together here. Make the best one yet, squeeze together. And up, extend, keep squeezing back, keep squeezing back, keep squeezing back, bend, and set down. Very nice. Very good class today, guys. I thank you for joining me on our journey into the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine, along with some good shoulder blade motion. Again, I encourage you to work your cars as much as possible, take anything that you like or more importantly, you felt like you need to work on from today's class and just drill it. So the, the biggest thing about all this stuff, the more time you get in it, the more practice, the more exposure you can give your body, the better it's going to feel, the better you're going to get, and then the more you can start to add on later. So again, thank you for joining me in today's class. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you at the next one.